Back in 2013, while I was still in Afghanistan, I participated in a dignified transfer ceremony. In this ritual, soldiers who are killed in country are placed on the plane that will bring them back from Afghanistan to the United States. The caskets have a flag on them and they're placed in an armored personnel carrier which carries them to the base of the plane. And before they're loaded up onto the ramp, uh, Citations are read and, and prayers are said and an honor guard performs a salute. Military and civilians, mostly veterans like myself, stand in formation and it's a slow and somber ceremony. It takes about an hour. Now, I was standing at attention and facing forward so I couldn't tell how the people around me were reacting but I can tell you that I had tears running down my face. How should we celebrate Memorial Day in the U.S.? How should anyone who lives in a country at war think about the lives that were lost in that war? With tears, yes. Young people die. Families are devastated. Children grow up, grow up without parents. Soldiers who survive spend the rest of their lives wondering if there is something they could have done to save their colleagues. It's sad beyond understanding. But I think that sadness is not enough. Here in the States, we get the Monday holiday off. There'll be speeches and parades. The president always lays a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. <laughs> Veterans groups will lay tiny flags in the military cemetery graves. And we'll look at these lives with honor and respect for the fact that they made the ultimate sacrifice. And we'll shake our heads. But in my opinion, that's not enough. There should also be questions. Why did these young people die? What did they die for? This week we learned about another city in Iraq, a city that was taken by U.S. forces at great loss of life and amazing injuries to many of the survivors. Uh, and this city fell. When I was doing chaplain training at the Veterans Affairs Hospital in June 2014, the city of Mosul in Iraq fell, and another city that had been taken by U.S. forces. It's hard to understand the impact that this has on veterans. I mean, for, in, the, in New York, the, the response was so bad that the hospital set up special counseling groups to help Iraq veterans make sense of what had happened. A lot of young people joined the military looking to do something meaningful. But where is the meaning in such futility? In addition to tears and questions, I think there should be anger. Iraq, Iraq was a discretionary war that was started with false information. And the planning and execution of Iraq was at best naive and at worst criminally incompetent. Yet no leader suffered any consequences for the Iraq. If a private loses his or her rifle, he or she can go to jail for a year. What's the penalty to a general for losing a war? Too often our military and civilian leaders are casual, too casual about sending, full, sending young people in harm's way. They go to war to score political points or distract the public or enhance the financial interests of corporations. In these wars where young people die, too often, too often they have no impact on the lives of average Americans. And I'm not just talking about Iraq. Let me tell you about a guy named Smedley Butler. Smedley Butler was a Marine who fought in the Philippines, in Cuba, in China, and in World War I in France. And he is, he is one of the most decorated Marines in the history of the Marine Corps. He won an unheard of two medals of honor. And he eventually retired as a two-star general. He's an icon of the Marine Corps, and they've named a base after him. And he had, a, he had a great nickname. He was called Old Gimlet Eye. Apparently, his eyes were bloodshot from a fever he picked up in the tropics. So after this highly decorated Major General of the, of the Marine Corps retired, he wrote a book called War is a Racket, and in which he talks about, he talks about how corporations make huge profits off of wars in which young people die. And he has some pretty radical solutions. 
he actually proposed that that the decision about whether to go to war or not should be left to the people who are going to go to war and actually do the dying. This is pretty radical from a, a major general in the Marine Corps. You know, and he's just one of many people in history who have talked about this painful truth that young people bring their idealism to the service and they're rewarded with by being exploited by political and, and financial leaders. So I'm asking that we think about the systems that foster war with tears and questions and anger. But on this Memorial Day, let us not forget the personal. Let us not forget the real pain that families feel because of loss of loved ones. And in that spirit, I want to show you a video from 2013. In this video, members of the 1st and 2nd Battalion of the Royal New Zealand Infantry Regiment perform a funeral haka. Now, a funeral, a, a haka is a Maori ritual that involves chanting and synchronized movement, and it's used to convey deep meaning. In this funeral haka, these soldiers are mourning the death of three of their colleagues who died by an IED in Afghanistan in 2013, and one of them is a woman. May all those affected by war use their tears and questions and anger to make meaning of those losses. Amen and blessed be.